video we're going to look at domain and range of functions and I've got three different functions here so fx and gx and hx and they're all very different and I want to look at the domain and the range of these functions so first of all let me define things the domain are the numbers that go into the functions so they're the, mo the numbers I can make x the range are the numbers that come out if you like on a graph they will be the y numbers and what I've done is I've graphed these three to show you graphically domain and range. So let's look at the first one. <clears throat> okay, this is the first one, and this is fx. If we look at this, y equals 2x minus 1, and we look at this, this straight line is going to carry on forever. We can put all the x numbers into this. So x can be any x, any real number that we can think of. And the y numbers that come out, they're also all the y numbers that come out. And that's because this is a straight line that just carries on forever, even though we don't see the whole graph. All the real numbers can go in for x, and all the real numbers can come out for y. Now let's pick on the second function. And this function is gx equals 2 to the power of x minus 3. I've drawn part of the graph like this. Now, what x numbers can go in? Well, again, all of them. This graph doesn't have any break in the graph. So that means I can put in 0, I get an answer. I put in minus 1, I get an answer, and so on. And you can get your calculator. Even if you put in a very small negative number into that function, you still get an answer. You can put a very large x number, you still get an answer. So x is, again, all numbers. There's nothing that I cannot have in the domain. Now let's think about y. y seems to start around about here and I can have all these numbers and the y numbers go up to 5 and if this graph is going to continue forever all these y numbers can come out. But if this graph continues forever this way it seems to be sort of smoothing out if you like and it's smoothing out at a certain line and I'm going to draw a line right here where it's smoothing out and that line is called an asymptote and as this graph goes smaller and smaller x gets smaller and smaller it goes towards this line and this line is where it, y goes through negative 3 so this line is actually y equals negative 3 but the graph never touches it so the range are all the numbers greater than y, y is greater than negative 3, but it doesn't include it. So I can have all the numbers bigger than negative 3. Let's look at the last one. And the last one is hx 1 over x plus 1. And let's just look at it at the graph to begin with. Here's the graph, and it just breaks there, and it breaks there. And again, I'm going to draw a straight line where it seems to have a break in the graph. And that break is just here at x equals negative 1. Now, why would it have a break there? That seems to be the one number that I can't put into the function because I can't get an answer. Let's make x negative 1 and see what happens. If we make x negative 1, we're trying to do 1 divided by 0. Now, you're not allowed to, or you cannot divide by 0. So this is the one number that x cannot be. So in the domain, x can be anything but not 0. So I'm not allowed to have an x number equal to negative 1. In the range, again, this is coming up like this, and it seems to break. And we've got this line here where just here and that line there is at y equals 0 so I can seem to have everything above that line and everything below that line for the y-axis so the range is everything but not 0 so the range includes everything but if I use y y cannot be 0 so I can see graphically straight away my domain range if I wasn't sure if I didn't have a graph I think about what I can't divide by 
and that's zero, and so I make x negative one. So these two things, domain and range. Domain, the x numbers, range, the y numbers.